Well, welcome back to Channel One. Today I'm going to be working on a 1500 watt electric fireplace insert. Uh, this is the type that slides into a piece of furniture. And the problem that we're having with it is the little fake flames that normally kind of flicker are not working. The lights are coming on, but they're not actually doing anything. So I'm going to take it apart and see what's wrong with it. At the same time, I'm going to go ahead and clean it out. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, just like with all our projects that are electrical, we want to make sure that we unplug it. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right into the back of this. It looks like this rear panel here comes off, so I'm going to go ahead and remove all the screws for that. So this looks a lot like the one I had worked on in the past. You may have seen a video, and all I had to do was replace that motor. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in just so I can see if maybe this is stripped or something, see if I can hear anything. All right, so the LEDs are on, and that should be turning. More than likely, it's probably that little motor right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that motor out and uh, get, the, uh, get the part number off it and just order one because there's nothing really that could go wrong other than that little motor. And while I'm here, I'm going to take the air hose and blow this all out because the heater part of it still works. It's just a little flame that's not working. to get this motor out of here I'm gonna actually have to move this little reflector here so we've got some um, screws on the back side and some on the bottom um, I think I'll move remove this here first I think that's gonna be easier so we'll take these screws off the back now what that's gonna allow that to do is able to possibly pull this out, move, remove that, and then all this is is just a clip, just a pin that kind of goes straight through. So we're going to kind of bend that like that. Take a pair of needle nose pliers, kind of straighten out as best we can. And we're going to just push that through to the other side. Should be able to pull that out. There we go. So there's the pin, cotter pin. And now we should be able to pull that right out of there. There we go. Now you don't want to bend that, okay? Put that someplace where it's not going to get damaged. Now we need to remove the motor, but before we do that, probably what we should do is cut these wire ties in here. Let's go ahead and cut those out of the way. So these are the wires for that motor. So let's go ahead and go ahead and cut those. So to get this motor here off, we're going to actually have to set this up on its end because the screws are underneath. All right, and pop the motor right out of there. All right, so there it is. And what do we have? It's an AC 110, 120 volt motor. Okay, well after about a couple of weeks I finally got the right motor. Uh, it is a little bit different, but uh, the rotation is correct. We have counterclockwise and a 10 to 12 rotations, and that's what I've got right here. So I've got the brand new motor. One of the problems we ran into is the shaft itself is a little bit narrower than the one that I got. So I took the caliper and I measured it. And I'm coming up with about um, 8 millimeters. So I'm going to have to go ahead and where it actually goes into uh, the motor itself. This is the old one here. And it slid right on there. With the new one, I'm going to have to drill that out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the drill, drill the center of that out there so it will fit the motor. And then that should slide right in there with no problem. There we go. And then the other side, obviously, is going to go on the side right here. And that should work with no problems at all. So now let's go ahead and just put the whole thing back together. All right, let's go ahead and put our new motor on first.
Okay, next, let's go ahead and put that piece on that we had the drill out. Should have a cotter key. If you don't, get a cotter pin. Put it in there. To lift this up to uh, put the four screws underneath or tip it over on its face. So now all we need to do is just tie the new motor in. Um, what I should have done when I took the old motor out, I should have just cut these wires off right uh, against the motor here. And uh, that way they would have been plenty long enough, but I didn't think of that at the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of splice these into the new uh, wire. All right, so before we put it all together, let's go ahead and test it out. There it is. Working like a champ. That's all it was was that motor. All right, go ahead and put it all back together. I'll spin it around. We'll take a look at it. All right, there she is. Working like a champ. That's all it was was that motor. This is the second one I've had to repair. The hardest part about this whole project is finding the right motor for this. You want to make sure that you get the right one when it comes to if it's counterclockwise or clockwise. If it's clockwise, then the fire is going to go backwards. If it's counterclockwise slash clockwise, then what's going to happen is going to act like your microwave when you put something in it. Sometimes it goes in this direction, sometimes it goes in this direction. So it's important for you to get the right motor for, uh, for the project. Also, you want to pay attention to the voltage. This is 120 volts AC. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. So all I need to do now is put this back in the, into the furniture, and uh, it's ready to rock and roll. Thanks an awful lot for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.